schools don't be having no money. Oh, I knew he was gonna say that. That's cat. <laughs> That's cat. That bro, that. They don't be having enough for me. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> you feel me, Jess? I'm glad you said it and not me. Yeah. Schools have a budget. The reason people think schools don't have money is you're coming in saying, I want to talk about this and my life. They want to say, I don't care. Right. How are you going to help our students actually engage? That part. How are you going to get them to not drop out? How are you going to get them to be successful in life? How are you going to encourage and inspire our teachers to keep going when they're undervalued and underpaid? So because you're not solving any problems, they don't have any money for you. Hold on. You speak in schools, right? Uh -huh. What's the most you ever made from a school? Probably about 18. 18,000? Yeah. To do what? To work with students. <laughs> I'm Like a program or like just to speak or what? It was for maybe 90 minutes. <laughs> right. I need some names because some people might say that's cat. I only have one. Seven figure speaker, Chris Singleton. He did 1.1 last year. Super proud of him. He's not even 30. But I want to talk about Kevon Lee. He's in the West Coast, California, 26 years old, made $100,000 in three months speaking for schools. Wow. My man said I was making $26,000 living in California after taxes. You know, they ain't all the money. This program worked, blah, blah. blah. Bro, I sleep good at night. Bro. Hey, why we ain't got no gigs? Like, what's up? What are we doing? <laughs> Welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast, man. This is about to be a phenomenal episode. Yeah. We are going to learn how to make money without having to do physical work, without having to sell somebody a product or a service, without webinars, without challenges, without writing a book, printing t-shirts, hustling in the streets, mm -hmm. doing exactly what you've been doing since you are at least one years old, speaking. And we have the GOAT. The king of speaker monetization, Mr. Jeremy. He's just trying to give me a smile. Oh, up, bro. Man? I'm trying to get you to teach me how to do what you do. Man, glad to be on. How you feeling, fam? I'm over here. I'm really, I'm really just um, stroking your ego. <laughs> so do you feel so good about this? You say, yo, Dave, I'm going to show you how to get these right. 20s, 30s, 40s yes. to have a conversation with an audience. Straight up. And I've honestly struggled, even though I think I'm a really good speaker. Mm -hmm. You are. You got the juice. I'm, it's, it's, I'm it's some average. core things you gotta you gotta have in place, which changes the game. You know what I'm saying? Like we literally in our first year show people that's been speaking, and most of their gigs are free. And if you are paid, and they're like, "Huh, I made twenty grand this year," to the very next year working with us, two hundred grand. Like so, there's a science. So well, yeah, we'll give you the game. Yeah. All right. So and they don't even have to have as many followers or subscribe. That's that's what's really making me mad, bro. Because that part. your students are making more money than me speaking. <laughs> but I've been putting in work for a long time. Right, right. And I'm kind of lit. Right. But yo, I'm call me a hater. I don't know. I'd be kind of jealous when I be seeing all the people making money out of your program. <laughs> right. uh, I'm going to let you introduce yeah. uh, Jessica because we just met. Yeah. But that short conversation, we started talking. And I was like, yo, you got to stop talking because the stuff you're talking about, I need right, on the right, podcast right, 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 immediately. Right. So I'm going to let you introduce. Yeah, yeah man. So, so Jessica Lundy is uh, one of our keynote writing coaches. Actually, our only keynote writing coach with Next Level Speakers yeah. Academy and our elite program. She works with all of our top tier, high level elite client speakers and shows them how to reformat their message, everything. Like how to really give that speech to where oh. you can get paid 10, 20, 30 thousand dollars. And she started off with, uh, you can tell them about the your background in TV. Mm -hmm. Like she beat at a competition in Michigan, bro, Detroit, 15,000 people. She was the number one. So she was the face of a news network for many years, then transitioned to the A and has been speaking and traveling the globe, you know what I'm wow. saying, making a whole bunch of money and impact with us. I love it, Jess. Jessica Welcome to the show. Lundy. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Oh, goodness. So so tell me what it is that you do in your own words. As a keynote writing coach? Period. I just want to know a little bit about you. Yeah, I mean, I was the type of person where when I was a kid, I wish I had a me growing up. Mm -hmm. So that's why I started working with college students because I dealt with depression. I dealt with anxiety. And I was like, man, I wish people were actually mm -hmm. talking about these things. Like, why does this have to be a secret? You're working with college students like a, like a professor? No, as a professional speaker. Okay. So as a keynote speaker. So universities will have me come in to kick off orientation, to do a commencement. They'll have me come in, speak to their first year experienced students. And now because I've been doing it so long, I'll actually speak to the higher ed professionals as well. So I'm okay. actually training them. And, okay. and she does corporate. And I do okay. corporate as well. 
Hold on real quick. So how long you been speaking? Uh, it's been about 10 years at this point. 10 years? Yeah. So even when I was a TV host, I was doing, I was getting all these requests to do commencements and career days. And then one day I was doing actually an eighth grade graduation and there was a line wrapped around the building for to talk to me, like parents, other principals were there and they're like, you need to do this full time. Mm -hmm. And I remember leaving that speaking engagement, having to interview a celebrity and felt conflicted. And I had a conversation with God and I was just like, am I in alignment with my purpose? Am mm -hmm. I in alignment with why you put me on this earth? And he said, your calling is actually bigger than that. So I had to make a choice if I wanted to do the glitz and the glam and be on TV and interview celebrities and do red carpet stuff like I interviewed Usher and all those people. Or could I actually be selfless enough to pour into the next generation? And when I did it, it really wasn't for the money. I just wanted to help the younger version of me. Mm. All right, so you did, that was your first speech, the eighth grade joint. Well, honestly, I've really been speaking my whole life. So I used to do beauty pageants. Mm -hmm. So I was that girl, uh, I was actually recruited in middle school to do pageants. I started winning at a young age. So then I was asked to do all of these speaking engagements very young. Mm -hmm. So by the time I was 15 years old, I had a consulting firm because I was already pretty elite with the level that I was already speaking at. So adults, um, politicians, uh, different people that were applying for high level jobs would ask me to help them. So they would be like, who is this, who is this young, young, young little black girl <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> actually helping me? But they're like, yo, like she actually constructs at a very high level. So I've gotcha. been helping people behind the scenes for a long time. Good. So, yeah. all right. I'm one, I'm <laughs> interested in this whole writing coach because I don't think I've ever written one of my speeches. This, the speech is like you write it and you recite it like a song and you say the same song every time? So you, ha you have a signature keynote. Mm, I, I believe I everybody should have a, a signature keynote, yeah. meaning that's what you're known for, right? Like if you talk about an artist, like it's their song. You know if you're going to the concert, they're going to kick it off with that. Everybody yeah. going to get hype and they're going to mm -hmm. come around that movement, right? So I structure that because you, you have to be the go-to authority in your space. And so the problem is, is most speakers, especially new speakers, are literally constructing new speeches every time they speak and they haven't really mastered anything. Dang, that's what I do. <laughs> okay, well, well, we're trying to get you to the bigger, the bigger bag, right? Ever done yeah. the same speech. And the reality is that can be a little bit stressful, and you're not really known for anything. You're kind of like all over the place. But, but I'm known for entrepreneurship, so I just talk about entrepreneurship all the time. Absolutely. So you will always have relevant in real time stories that mm -hmm. you can interject, but there should be core principles that you should teach. So a lot of people like to show their story, right? Mm -hmm. They're talking about their life experiences, but the reality is somebody brought you to their organization to affect change. Like mm -hmm. at the end of the day, there's a line item budget for you to come that in. Part. And then there's a survey at the end on how did you actually do? How did you actually perform? Because the reality is the most of your business should be referrals. But if you came in and you just inspired and motivated people, but they didn't really teach anything, there might be a disconnect. Mm -hmm. mm, okay. So so think about it this way. When she comes in, some people are like, hey, I want to be a speaker. This is what I speak about. But she'll hear this story and be like, ah, there's more depth to it. Right. And because of your background and because of your experience and then your story, now I'm going to help you craft the keynote. So they don't have to take it and memorize it verbatim. Yeah. Right. Just yeah, it's more absolutely. like they got to, okay, I got to rewire your brain. Your story is not just how you didn't make the football team and will struggle. It's so much deeper than that. Your father wasn't there for you. Yeah. You got 15 years of feeling rejected and broken, but you still rise above. And now you got your own company. Like it's more to your story. And people's like, oh, they still stuck on what happened in 2004. Yeah. Mm. But they don't realize there's so much more. So when she sits down and helps you formulate it, now you got something signature. Like, or bro, when E.T., you know, E.T. is a yeah. part of our company. Yeah. He's one of yeah. our business partners. The number one motivational speaker in the world said companies still bring him in. To, they'd be like, bro, can you tell the, the guru story? He's wow. like, bro. Yeah. Then when I, you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe. Bro, yeah. They still want yeah. it. That's his signature speech. So he's going to speak for an hour, but going to mix it in there, and then they lose their mind. Yeah. So she shows you how to find that sweet spot. You know what I'm saying? Because they pay sweet when you got the sweet speech. So hold on. Yeah. You got canned speeches? Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. I thought you just go up there and do your thing. Holy Ghost. Let me be clear. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> so, so yeah. So I've got a signature message I know. But there are questions I ask every organization. What's the purpose for this event? Y'all take notes, right? 
What's the your people take notes? Oh, they taking notes right now. Okay, all right. Hey, put it in the comments just so we can see if yeah. you are taking notes. Yeah. Especially yeah. we got more than me that right there. Are y'all taking notes or y'all just listening? Make sure y'all taking notes. Right. Okay, Thanks. let's 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 go. So, what's the purpose for the event? What's the theme for the event? Um, tell me about the demographics. Like, if it's a school, teachers, students, like I want to know fifty percent black, fifty percent white. Like, I want to know demographics. What are your challenges? How do you want them to feel? What are some of your pain points that keep you up at night as a CEO? Like, you know, what I'm saying, what things would you like to change within your organization? How, you know, what I'm saying, like, you ask all these different questions, so, so now they feel like, man, you get me. You know what I'm saying? You mm. understand what my people, if I could change one thing within your organization, what would it be? What are the three things that you want them to learn from my speech? So I just had a, I just had a conversation. I'm speaking for this big real estate conference in, um, in Arizona in a couple of weeks. Mm. And they were like, Jeremy, we got all these ideas. We got all these things. I'm like, okay, tell me, give me all the information. This is how I feel like I'm best serve and add value. Oh my God. Okay. What's in the contract? I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so you got to know what questions to ask. So you're going to add the most value. Gotcha. But so Going back to this core speech, is it that you have a core speech, but based on what they want, you're customizing your core speech or adding something in there to add to it? 100%. So when I come oh. in and speak, I know when I, I, if I got an hour to speak, I know 15, 20 minutes or so, it's going to be my foundational, what we teach, yeah. like the tree trunk, the foundation of your message. Then all the branches are all the other little things that I talk about during it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I, if you tell me, hey, we're struggling with A, B, C, D, I'm like, bet, I'm going to take my story and I'm going to tailor it to tackle some of these different challenges and drive home these points. That way it's personal. Like when I speak, I wrote it down. I got about 80 different stories that I can tell of things I've experienced, right? So I know what stories to pull from from my personal experience to be able to add the most value and connect with the audience. But people don't realize their pain, all yeah. that they've gone through. Can I just can I just touch on that real quick, Talk bro? To me. Like, that's the foundation of it. Like, bro, when me and Jess be at Masterminds and we be coaching and mentoring our people, like, people, everybody got a story. And it's so mind-blowing that people, when we meet with folks and they yeah. get with us and they join our program or join one of our trainers, and they're like, oh, my God, I got a story. I got a yeah. message. I'm like, yeah, all the hell, all the pain, all the suffering, all the trials and tribulations, everything you've overcome. It's not a testimony. If you don't testify, you share that. Bro, people pay me for my perseverance. They don't want me to just come in and just be rah rah and tell some cool, funny stories. They like, bro, tell us about all the hell you went through and the mindset shift you went through and where you are now. So now my C-suite executives know what they can do. They know what's possible. So the core of what we do before we even get into their message and the story is to let every single human being know you've been talking. You got a message. You got a story. You've got some type of expertise. It's your responsibility to share it. So we've got thousands of people in our community that's got messages, they got stories, and they just realize, like, yo, I can make a business out of it. Yeah. Bro, I, I know 400 people in our community right now. They was already speaking. They didn't right. realize they can get compensated. Their hearts were pure. <laughs> and those are people we like yeah. to work with. Yeah. Some folk hit me like, hey, bro, I just want to get to the bag. I'm like, but you don't even really care about people. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, because you don't care about people, I'm a little leery. Right. But it's like, but I know folks are like, okay, you do care. I'm gonna give you all the game and show you how what you've been doing. You can, bro. You've been in hundreds of schools speaking, a lot of yeah. it for free. Yeah. Uh, so it's uh, like, but uh, so uh, now, sure. well, like, you know what they say, right? What would you do when you were young? Well, they asked me you were young. What would you do every single day if you could do it and not have to worry about getting paid for it? It would be speaking, a hundred percent, helping people, make an impact. Now we show people how to get compensated for it. But all right, so. Golly, yeah, there's yeah. so many directions I want to mm -hmm. go in because one, I want to get to the bags, but I do care about people. So I, oh, well, I already know. Y'all right. sure. would accept me, right? Oh, okay, sure. I want to be part of the program. For sure. All right, so. Um, Hold on, remember that school tour, Me, You, E.T., Inky D? Yes. Willie Moore? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Then you was in Alabama with Brian doing some tours. Rest in peace. Yeah. Hold on. You didn't get paid for that tour, did you? No. Nah. Okay, because I didn't either. I thought, I thought you were <laughs> saying that. He said, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> that was the purity of our heart. I was like, hold on, fam. Right. All right. So, so school. So my my angle this year is schools. Let me just tell y'all a few things yeah. that I want to okay. do. One thing I really want to do is when people have conferences, mm -hmm. I want to interview the host of the conference on stage at their conference, at their event, because I know I can pull out the heart of the person of why they're doing this. And they can explain better what this thing is about 
if I interview them, both before and after. So I want to do like before, like, yo, let me interview you for your event. Um, it'll be like an hour long ad pretty much. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Talking about your event, but I want to do it on stage. So that's one angle I want to go so into. So we'll do that at our speaking. conference then. Oh, say less. Yeah, I love it. Right, Remind no me, Jeff. Yeah, I will. Right, good. Okay. Yeah. So that, that's a lane I want to go into. Because mm -hmm. um, I, I do want to speak, but not everybody is offering that service, right? But I also want to speak. I don't know if I want to host like that, but I do want to speak. And I was about to put my EPK together. And I called Ebony, who, um, I don't know what she do for you. I just know she's been with you forever. And she didn't help you build the company and all that kind of, what does Ebony do? So Ebony is my booking manager, okay. personal assistant. So he, she, all business dealings, contracts, all of that. And then she runs whatever she needs to the Nick, yeah. who's our COO, or my wife, Tracy, who handles the paper. Super lit. So yeah. I call her. Behind Jeremy's back, I said, hey, I need some help. <laughs> And I'm like, yo, this is what I want to do. I want to host. I also want to speak. And I want to go into the schools. And she said, don't do that. You need to pick one. Like, mm. pick a, a lane to go into. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and I said, mm -hmm. schools. But here's my question. I'm rounding out this into a question. Schools don't be having no money. Oh, I knew he was going to say that. That's cap. <laughs> That's cap. That, bro, that... They don't be having nothing for me. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> you feel me, Jess? I'm glad you said it and not me. Yeah. Schools have a budget. I think I, this is when I realized I was going to not just do well in life because I knew, you know, a decade ago when I quit my job, like eventually I'll get to a point where I make six figures. Yeah. But then you go to six figures a quarter, then six figures a month. In 2018, I got my first $25,000 check from a school. One school. Speaking to a group of teachers. And it changed my life. I called E.T. I thought we was going to have a moment. I was like, Me, bro, thank you for believing in me. You was right. He was like, oh, yeah, praise God. Get used to it. I got to go. Click. Love you. Bye. Click. I was like, hello? <laughs> <laughs> and he was literally backstage about to speak himself. Right. My man was like, yep, praise God. Get used to it. Changed my life, bro. At that time, I was charging like 10. But when I saw an organization was willing to pay me 25, I was just like, this is different. But I realized the branding, the website, mm -hmm. The images, the testimonials, like you're literally building a business. It's like almost having a storefront. You got to have a nice sign. You got to have a nice vibe on the inside. You got to have a nice different assortment flavors. You know what I'm saying? You got to have coupons for people who want to come back. You know what I'm saying? And buy two, get one free. Like the same whoa, way. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Buy two speeches, get one free? Yes and no. I wasn't saying that, but I've done some really dope deals before. What? Bro, let me tell you how I used to put together. Let me give you a game. Let me, let me bless your people real me. quick. <laughs> Jess, this I, did, is crazy. Yeah, yeah. I did a tour one time. It didn't start off as a tour. Yeah. I was just a hungry, ambitious cat. You know what I'm saying? And this is right around when Ebony came on about eight years ago. I said, Ed, whenever you call the school and the school locks me in, tell them that if they ref recommend another school, we'll give them 20% off. If they recommend three schools, we'll give them 30% off. If they recommend four schools, we'll give them 40% off. So now the schools are... are Advocating for me. You done turned the schools yeah. into an affiliate. Right. How you sure. make a school exactly an affiliate? Sure. What we did. Yeah. What? And I think the most we've done is one school lined up four other schools. So I spoke for five schools total, but I gave that school 50% yeah. off. And they were elated. And what one gig for 10000 ended up turning into five gigs for forty five grand. Mm hmm Okay. And they because, want to do this. Right. And, and, that's the, and that's the thing people don't realize. So I want to go back to what you said, that schools don't have money. The reason people think schools don't have money is you're coming in saying, I want to talk about this and my life and my experience. And they're like, they want to say, I don't care. Right. How are you going to help our students actually engage? That part. How are you going to get them to not drop out? How are you going to get them to be successful in life? Mm. How are you going to encourage and inspire our teachers to keep going when they're undervalued and underpaid? So because you're not solving any problems, they don't have any money for you. <sighs> so it's right. not that you're not a dope yo, speaker. First off, don't be coming at my <laughs> show talking. Hey, yo, she's pointing directly at me. Yeah. Like, yo, first off, it's my house. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? She's attacking me. You're making a thousand, hundred dollars for a pass. Yeah, 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 yeah. Premium, premium. Oh my out gosh. Here. So, so it's not that you're not phenomenal, and th this is for your people, right? Because, mm -hmm. because a lot of times people are like, "Yo, I'm an amazing speaker," and we're mm -hmm. like, "We're not saying you're not right. dope. We're saying you don't have the language." 
Right. Mm. Right. And and language really is the key to make the most impact and income. Okay. One, I need the language. Two, I think the most a school gave me, I got a check for it, it was $1,250. And I'm like, okay, we're doing something now because I didn't think they had any money at all. They could have added a zero. What's, okay, hold on, hold on. You speak in schools, right? Uh-huh. What's the most you ever made from a school? Uh, probably about eighteen. Eighteen thousand yeah. to do what? To work with students. <laughs> I'm like a program or like just to speak or what? It was for maybe ninety minutes. <laughs> Okay. All right, we went from eighteen dollars okay. an hour to eighteen thousand an hour. Praise okay. God. Praise okay. God. Yeah. Okay. We yeah. Good yeah. God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is it a is it like college schools have the money or like college high schools? Colleges or? and high schools. I think a lot of times people don't realize. Like I always say, people book you for in the education for retention or recruitment, right? So if they want to actually get their students to engage and to stay and be connected, they're going to invest in that. Then there's all these government funded programs that have money because they want to actually help low income students who we actually care about. There's actually billions of dollars uh, allocated to make them go to higher education. So they want to actually pay Mm. you to encourage them so they can go to college so they can end that cycle of poverty for a whole lineage. There's a lot of things you can do with five hundred dollars. I mean, you can have a night out with your significant other. You could buy some really expensive shoes. Well, really nice shoes are about double $500. Um, You could buy a course or you can learn something for $500. But I have something better for you to do with the $500. I want to meet with you every single morning for the rest of your life. Well, maybe not the rest of your life, but every morning, Monday through Friday, For the rest of the year, I have information and game that have allowed me to build a successful business, a successful community and a successful life all the way around. But I want to share that with you. But the only way we can accomplish this is not me selling you a course, not me giving you a one on one consultation, because even with that, you'll get the information, but you'll need more. I want to meet with you every single morning. Now, would I meet with someone every morning for 500 bucks for a year? And the answer is yes. Actually, we've been doing this thing since 2017. We have what's called the morning meetup. Every single month, we have a theme, whether it's social media, whether it's motivation, whether it's strategy, whatever it is, we have a theme for the month. And every morning in that month, we have a conversation around that topic. And I am giving a wealth of knowledge, not only myself, but a lot of friends, a lot of people that you see on this podcast, they join every single week. So you need a community of people that you can grow with and you need a coach. I'm your coach. The Morning Meetup is your community. Go to themorningmeetup.com. It's $499 and I will meet you every single morning for an entire year. Give it a shot. And what, so when you go into, yo, every high school I ever talked to, bro. And maybe, okay, this might be a fair question. Okay. I go to the school's that need me in terms of like our black kids. Yeah, we, we, that's, that's who we speaking to. And they got money. They got money. Because yeah. they get grants. They get funding. Right. So it's so not like. Title one schools. Yeah. I probably get 70% of my bread when the educational space, when I was heavy in schools, from Title I. Yeah. Those that really? are, that are Those yeah. that are underfunded who are struggling. Yeah. But then there are other schools. Mm-hmm. I've, I've gone year after year to this one school. I can't name it, but it's in Riverside, California, um, right outside of L.A. That's where the money is, bro. And, uh, and they in bring, L.A.? Yeah, and they bring me in every year. And 96% of their kids go to college, like 70% of them Ivy League. Like, they don't have the poverty issues we mm-hmm. have. Their issue is the principal going to the bathroom. She sees a little powder on the counter. Uh, the kids designer drugs cutting suicide you know what i'm saying alcohol abuse their parents got money bro they super wealthy and they don't know how to manage it so they're like yo can you come in and give a message and hit their heart to show them and you're super talented and half the kids is doing coke because they want to stay up to be sharp to be alert to do really really good on the sat to get into the ivy league because they got to keep up with their parents and, but the, you know what i'm saying the like the parents expect them to be to operate at a certain mm-hmm. level and the pressure of that needs to keep them sharp 
Yeah, this thing is deep, bro. So I've been to rural schools. I'm in the corporate space now. And I still speak at schools from time to time. But I've been to rural schools, country schools, urban, inner city, private schools, charter schools, Catholic schools. Me and Justin, we done traveled the world. Yeah. Like, we've done it all. People are hurting, period. Yeah. But they're, but but I used to feel like I'm a Robin Hood and these schools in the hood, I'm going to show up to them and bless them. And I did that for years. But God was like, no, I'm going to show you the language so you can get in here and get the funding. I went to school one time, like 2019, 2018, 2019. They was like, we don't have a 15 grand. I was charging 15 then. I was like, oh, okay. We, asked, we, be, we begin to have conversations. They was like, but we do have a, a grant with um, uh, Mothers Against Drunk Drivings. I was like, Really? Bro, they was like, all right, well, we only have 3000 for you to motivate our kids, but the other 12000 are going to come from this grant. Just make sure you talk about stay away from alcohol. Oh, so you got to know what questions to <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they said, we're going to pull the yeah. 12000 from from Mothers Against Drunk Driving. They're going to write a grant. You just talk about for five, ten minutes, stay away from alcohol. Don't drink and drive. I was like, got it. So they oh, have okay. it. You got so that's just, why that those conversations, those pre-event right. calls, right? Because sometimes with the booking request will come in, they might put a low number and you'll be yeah, like, man, know. should I even reach back out? Then you talk to them and you actually let them know that you, because think about it. If you're talking about, like he said, kids on coke, mm -hmm. kids committing suicide. I speak on mental health. So if, if they have a suicide issue at the school, which is happening more and more, yeah. You can't put a price on what you would on. pay Come to on. help solve that problem. Mm. So when you're solving these deep problems, you're talking about ending poverty, what you teach with entrepreneurship, Come on, man. that's vital. That's you're changing a whole lineage. So <sighs> when you think about that type of language of how you're teaching students to have a business, and then you end up actually getting a sponsorship by a bank, and now you're teaching them how to that have... Part their own first bank account and start their own company and how that can change their whole life. Because the bank- You have the, the ability yeah, to do that. Because the bank has to, the banks also have a certain amount of money that they have to put back into the community. Yeah. And it makes sense for them if they come in and sponsor a tour and you come in and talk about investing and, and opening up a bank account and becoming an entrepreneur. Yep. Now you got 1,500 kids realize that Chase- sponsor this thing and now they all open up a preliminary bank account. Yeah. Well, that's a good look for Chase too. Yeah. Like there's a there's a so much science behind Bruh, it. That's what we I, yeah. I thought I was you're just supposed to be good at speaking and people just book you and you get a little press kit. That's the first okay. that's that's step one. You did say something <laughs> about the inquiry comes in. Yeah. Okay. How do we get the inquiry to come in? Do we run ads? Or? So so as a speaker, you should have a website. Okay. You should have a speaker website and there should be a booking page. So on the booking page. You got that, Kay? You writing this down? Are you writing this stuff down? Good. And Jay tells everybody this. You got to have estimated budget. Because you can have your speaker fee, right? And you be like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Okay, 10 grand, 20 grand, you know, whatever. And they, they mess around and put 30 grand. And you're like, wait, is this an error? Right. Oh, that's what you got. Oh, so you're not saying I charge this amount. You're saying what's your estimated budget, and then they just put their own number in there. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and it and might be higher times, than what you charge, right? And if it's lower, if they only put four thousand, but you know you're at eighty five hundred, only four thousand, bro, for a school. Bro, I don't leave the crib for, uh, I don't want, uh, last time I said this. Nah, story. say what you want to say. Nah, say what you be saying. broke the internet. Say what you be saying. Like, <laughs> say they murdered me. Yeah. They, like, they called me out. I told them I only leave the house for less than 30. And they told me, you're out of touch. I was just like, man, bro, I got a family, bro. I pay my dues. I done spoke to over 100 group homes, homeless shelters, detention centers over the years. Like, I got a whole community of 1,000 people I can give speaking opportunities to. So you got five, 10, 15 grand. Like I got a whole bunch of people in our elite program I'll recommend. But now, you know, my time is valuable. You know what I'm saying? My kids are getting older now. And so I raised my price. And so when I say only four grand, like we got people in our community in their 20s and 30s, hundreds of them making six figures a year. Like it's absolutely my Hundreds goal. of speakers yes. making six With figures With no a year. experience. Let's say that. With no, Come like on, no man. experience. Like these people were not speakers Prior to joining our elite program, they had right. no experience. Shout out to Donovan. He did Donovan. like ADT. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. Because yeah. hold on real quick. Okay. I need some names because some people might say that's cat. Oh yeah, yeah come yeah. on, like come I got on. first and last. Uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. So I first was <laughs> always talking about Donovan. Yeah, yeah. Donovan Tolbert lives in South Carolina. Not even from like a big city, big market. Not a big yep. following on Instagram at all. And my man did like, I think he did like ADT, like door to door salesman. Mm -hmm. 
My man, the first six months, he made like maybe 15 grand. It wasn't nothing crazy. The next six months, he made over $100,000. Speaking. And now he's going crazy. He's going crazy. What's he's his topic? Crazy. What's his topic? Um, what was he speaking on? Just overall motivation. He yeah. was a um, a track runner, yeah. uh, track and field in NCAA, a Division One school. And he got injured and like bounced back and yeah. was back successful running track and he basically talks about mindset. Yeah, he does. He's like, it's yeah. nothing like and super crazy, but yeah. it's really inspiring. And 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 what is his? Who does he speak to? He's in middle schools and high schools. Middle middle schools. Middle schools. middle schools. Oh yeah. No, oh, I'm. In, if I look at ten schools that book me, six of them are middle school, four are high school. Believe it or not, that's my stats. Yep. Give me another name. I need another name. I need another and, name. And what, in what industry? Because mm. <laughs> right. we're we talking a lot all about up, the yeah. edu- all right, Let me get your female in the education yeah. space. Atia Johnson, because we ain't even talked about school yeah, contracts yeah, yet. Yeah. Bro, Atia Johnson got a contract for $75,000. Guess what she do for a living? She does this part time. We the part time yeah. king. I promise you. We got so many people changing their lives, speaking part time. She does hair for a living. But she was like, as opposed to just helping them find beauty on the outside, these young queens need beauty on the inside. And that's what you're teaching them in their speeches. Yes. Yes. They yeah. Okay, okay. When okay. they yeah. tell me what they, what they do. do. So she got and a $75,000 yeah. contract. Yeah. I call her, congratulate her. She was like, coach, I just got another one for eighty five. I said, what? now you're showing out. Hold on, what's the contract? How do, what does that have What's the agreement? So as opposed to somebody coming in and speaking once for like, 15,000 and 10,000, it's like, hey, I'll come in and speak six times, but only speak for four or 5,000. Oh, right. so they can just put it in their budget. Right. And it's already earmarked. So they spread $75,000 across the, the year, but then you just come in, you know what I'm saying, once a week or twice a month and speak after school, pour into the girls, and then keep it moving. Yeah. This is wild. Yeah. BJ Page, another one in DC, yeah. the DMV, Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you something. BJ, he, he got the whole Baltimore accent yeah. too. Uh, like he really about that life. And my man did like almost 280 last year on speaking in school. 180,000. Yep. And he rarely leaves the DMV. Yeah. Yeah. I told Fendi, you, you know Fendi? He got a lot of followers. Fendi grew up with Toby. Mm-mm. <laughs> is he no. little on the ground? No. Is he little no. on the ground? No. I don't no. think nobody. Most people are really no, not yeah. good on the ground. Yeah, I don't know many people. And then some, they don't there work. are a few yeah. that might have twenty or 30,000, yeah. yeah. but that's because the kids in the schools or the companies they work for follow them, but they ain't nobody. Like, that Instagram ain't got nothing to do with. The following on social media ain't yeah. got nothing to do with it. Yeah. <sighs> oh, yeah. my God. Yo, I, I'm almost in shock, especially because I've known you for so long, mm-hmm. and I know you speak. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yo, he's just, he's really good at speaking. But I didn't, I never until now, I didn't understand the science. And I've been around Etsy and Inky and right. y'all be giving, y'all be giving me bits of information, but y'all ain't never really sat down and gave me this. I'm going to call all y'all. Like, yo, why didn't y'all tell me? Give me another industry. Give me another industry. A, a, a student. A student. A student in another industry. So name one. <laughs> we, we could we could do we could do we could do aviation. We could talk about Sandra. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm well, saying? Okay, Women so. in aviation. So she in corporate. She's like one of the very few black engineers in the mm-hmm. aviation space. Like we've got a lot of different people like that. We could talk about Dr. Um, Nikisha Hammond, who's making six figures a year speaking on part time on the side. <laughs> on the side. Like, these are all people on the side. Yeah, we can talk about Jeremiah Brown. He used to play in the NFL. You know what he yeah. told me in a recent testimonial? He says he gets paid now more. He gets paid more now than when he got in the NFL. What? Yes. He played for the Jacksonville Jaguars and another team for like four years, five years. And he gets years. to be present with his kids now. Oh, that's the flex. Because people forget about the time freedom. Yeah. You think about one hour. Most people had to work a month, two, sometimes three months to make what we make in yeah. an hour. So and then, Felix Bobo. Felix Bobo, 45, 46 years that's old. That's his stage name or his real name? That's, first off, that's his real name. <laughs> that's a lit name. That's his like, real name. You'll never forget that. And, you know, and Felix, he in his 40s, great heart, great spirit. I think his biggest month, and now every month isn't like this. Some month is 12000 or 15, 18, but one month he made $40,000. Mm. And when he sent me the testimonial video, he was like, man, Jay, I can't even give you credit. I give it all to God. I said, no doubt. I don't want no credit. You just come back and let me know it's working. Yeah. $40,000 in one month, bro. All like, right. This thing is different, man. So this is, so we got a formula. Yeah. We've actually crafted the formula, right? Mm-hmm. We, we added Jessica to our company, bro, because she's freaking brilliant. 
Yeah. So uh, ET, you know what I'm saying, Inky Johnson, like we all, Next Level Speakers Academy, we got a formula that shows people how to become a six-figure speaker. And most people hear that. And I feel like half the work we do, Jess, it's mindset. Oh, for sure. Because people hear it and they're like, I can't even make six figures. I'm like, yeah, but you've been prepared for six figures from all this pain, all the hardships, all the stuff you overcame. And the fact that in your heart, you actually want to talk about it. Mm. Most people on social media only want to put their good out. But the fact that you went through a lot of pain and you overcame it and you actually want to share with others and you're not embarrassed by it. That's what qualifies you to be on stage, to speak and change lives. And so I tell people all the time, $8,400 a month. $8,400 $8,400 times 12 is $100,000. Yeah. That's two gigs for $4,200. That is hella easy. Because the starting crazy. speaker in schools gets between $2,500 and $5,000. I'm talking starting about those with no, schools? yes, starting. those with no experience. Those with no, let me tell you, this, Jared, Jared Scott, shout out to Jared. <laughs> yeah. Love Jared. As he's one of, my, one of my close friends now. Young guy, killing it. Yeah. When I first got with Jared, he was working for an agency. They was taking advantage of him. He was maybe getting like $1,500 to speak here or there. Bro, Jerry did close to a half a mil last year. Yeah. He not nowhere near 30. What? Yes. Yes. Speaking. Yes. All right. What's Jerry? I, like, okay. Has, okay. Hispanic and white? Or I think so, yeah. All yeah. 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 All right. In okay. Texas. Killing it. The second part. Changing hold on, hold on, lives. Hold on. Changing lives. Changing lives. But you know what sparked it? So people see him now like, bro, almost a half a million dollars, like in one year speaking, like the school's shaping lives. But they don't know. He's been speaking for years. His heart been pure. And when I saw his message, and he raps too. Yeah. He, bro, he got so much swag, bro. Yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> I want to give you all the game. You know what sparked it? One of his close friends committed suicide when he was in high school. Mm. And then there was an outbreak in his city in Texas of kids committing suicide. That's what moved him. And that's what moves us. Yeah. People out here suffering, bro. So we focus a lot on the money because this is like, I, we still like, man, this yeah. is crazy. But what sparked it for Jared, the catalyst, like everyone else in our community, is they say, man, people are out here suffering. And I got something inside me that can change that. And so when you come to us and you got a good heart and you really do care about people, that's all we need, right? Yeah, yeah. We don't need a whole bunch of experience. Yeah. I just want to make sure you got a pure heart. You really do care about people. You really want to make an impact. I'm like, I'll give you all the game. All right. So the, the next half of this conversation is going to be extremely selfish because okay. <laughs> we got you. you know, like, I, I need yeah. to know how to do this stuff. And I know you all have a formula. So um, I'm going to try to extract as much of this formula Let's as go. we can in the next few minutes. Um, so where do I start? I'm um, and you guys have a you have a program. Mm-hmm. You have a program that you help people mm-hmm. with. I'm a speaker. I feel like I have a message. I need a career change. I'm stuck in my job. You all are like, really? It almost sounds too good to be true that I can make a living and make a difference at the same time. <laughs> I'm glad and, you said that. And I can change my own life by having... Change your other's lives. Yeah. yeah, like I can have time freedom by really releasing people from yeah. whatever they're battling. Yeah. Absolutely. So I, like I am that person. That, that yeah. makes me smile. Yeah. How do I decide... And you're saying I should pick a lane that I'm an expert in, correct? Mm -hmm. For sure. How do I decide that? I think that comes from getting quiet. Okay. So you got to look at what's important to you, not where the money is, because there's money in every industry. Come on. Say that one more time. There's money everywhere. There's money in every industry, because like, I'm going to be honest, because sometimes people are like, yo, I really feel called to serve the next generation, but there's no money there. And I'm like, well, that's a mindset issue. Right. You're going to have to do some digging and some research and there's tons of money for you. But figure out like who you're the most passionate about. So that really looks like education, K through 12. That looks like colleges and universities. That looks like corporations. That looks like nonprofit organizations and the whole faith community. So once you kind of have that bucket, then you can kind of narrow it down. Like I know for me, I'm like, I, I, I'm not really going to no elementary school. I just, I, ain't, I don't got it, right? But high schoolers, mm-hmm. high schoolers, colleges, I could do them, corporations and nonprofit organizations. And so it's really good to just kind of dominate and focus on one lane. And the reason I tell people that is because the language is different, right? So how you would speak to a middle school and a high school is going to be completely different than you speak to a university, completely different than you speak to a Fortune 500 corporation. So we want you to like master that first, and then you can craft your message so that it's in alignment. For example, like I have a book called Wake Up and Win, Your Student Guide to Success. Well, it's a Mm. student guide 
to success. So it's for students yes. and their word success is in it, which mm. means there's a line item budget for it. Mm. So when I tell people I, I like sold 10,000 copies of my book in my sleep, it was because I met a need. I didn't confuse my audience when I created a product for them. And so sometimes people are forcing things that they did five or 10 years ago to fit that square in a circle. And it's like, no, no, create something specifically for the audience that you want to speak to. And so that gives you credibility. The 10,000 books, who bought them? Bulk sales. So colleges, uh, universities, high schools. And I only sell them like maybe 250, 500 at a time. So what? Yeah. on top of the speaker fee. Yeah, See, this is a whole nother mindset shift come for me on. because I write a book and I'm going to post it on Instagram, link in my bio. Yeah. I'm going to do a little launch event. We're going to sell 10, 20 books. But you're saying. I'm never going to post it on Instagram. I don't need to because because that's not necessarily my audience. Come on. Now, over time, because I realized that there's a lot of millennials that are educators, then they might follow me and they'll bring me to their institution. That does happen. And even in colleges and university, a lot of times the students are the ones that actually pick which speakers come to speak to their university. So there is some to that. But no, I didn't write a book so that people on Instagram would buy or millennials would buy it. I bought it so that it would sell. 250 to 500 at a time. At a time. Yeah. And I sign each one too because I want them to feel for sure. special, right? right. And, and I let them know that. So they're like, oh my God. Or I incorporate a book signing and now they have a whole luncheon in my name because I'm signing the books, which actually looks good for, for PR purposes. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it goes back to what she was saying. You ask the questions, you get quiet, you have the still time with God, you ask organizations questions, she realized there's a gap here. So I felt impressed to write a book for teachers next level teaching the art and science of how to reach the hearts and minds of every kid in every classroom you wrote a book for the teachers for teachers i see where you're going with this because because the teachers were struggling you know what i'm saying and so then i wrote a book for teachers and i had a bunch of other educators challenge it because they was like okay it sounds like you super pro the school here and now you super pro the kids like tell me have a good balance but the dad i did all that then I began, to, I began to write a book for parents. Why? Because half the complaints I would get from teachers and principals when we would have our one-on-one -on -one time is the kids is crazy, but the parents are worse. So I began to write a book for, called Next Level Parents, but I didn't really, I kind of took my time with it. I didn't really press it until one of my homeboys, who's a principal here in Atlanta, was just like, man, I, I need something for parents. I said, what you mean? He was like, you know, we get a budget every year of 15000 that's supposed to do something to enhance and build relationships with parents. You got a book? God was like, Dodo, <laughs> Dodo, I told you to write this book a year and a half ago. Bro, I started scrambling. Like, no, but I have it in a few months. But he had to spend that budget that month. Yeah. But, I, but that, was the, that was the sign I needed to say, okay, for the next few weeks, let me just put, go all in and finish writing this book. Then I hire some parent liaisons that have kids in middle school, high school, and college to really challenge my thoughts, my critical thinking, to, to add the most value. Yeah. And so, so when you, wow. she, she's solving a need, yeah. Which is why they like 250, 500 copies. So now you multiply 500 copies times $20 a copy. That's 10 grand. On top of her $15,000 charging, she's made $25,000 and she's changing lives. So this and then you post it on LinkedIn and then now everybody else wants to have that experience. Absolutely. Because we're doing experiences. Absolutely. So everybody, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, oh, we didn't even we'll got bring into that. the social media and yeah, the marketing yeah, and the yeah. signs behind that. Yeah. So, slow down. We're getting there. We are <laughs> getting there, yeah. guys. Right. <laughs> so we got to find... A, a specific group of people that's going to pay us to speak, right? Yeah. We got to find where, like, what market we're going to attack, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And also, we need to identify what the message is going to be, yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. And I guess we got to get into the branding of it, right? So talk to me about the branding of this whole message and the marketplace that we figured out. Yeah, so I, I tell people all the time to brand their name. A lot of times they want to brand the program or they want to come up with something clever. Like, it's your name. They're going to follow you on Instagram. They're going to go to your website, like brand your name. Get a logo, a professional logo made. Get a nice website, EPK, like all those different things so that when organizations come to your website, they take you serious. So for some people that work with us in their first year, yes, Jessica helped them with their message and took it to another level. But when we help with the branding, now nobody's questioning because people don't want to book speakers who are trying to be speakers. They want to book speakers who are already speaking. Mm. So we specialize in, in helping you look like an expert. Yeah. So now we host private masterminds when we put you on stage. 
Now, on your website, you can say that she shared the stage with the number one motivational speaker in the world, Dr. Eric Thomas. Mm -hmm. And now people are just like, oh, you must be the real deal if you and his mastermind, if you on stage with him. That's why you did that. So, yo, <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing some stuff now. A couple years ago, he, uh, Jeremy, he booked out my venue to do. He's like, yo, I'm going to do a speaker's training. Um, E.T. is going to be there, CJ, and there was a whole audience. And I'm looking at the camera, and the camera... The space ain't that big. Yeah. Right, but the right. camera has like the heads of the people and the person on stage. And this person is on stage giving it they all, speaking. Yeah. I'm like, bro, there's 30 people here. You're going yeah. crazy. <laughs> but you're saying you'll put together an event so that you at least have a speaker reel or something. Yeah. I yes. Because, because we oh know. My, yo, this is right, wild to right, me, bro. Yeah. Right. So it's the, it, it is the full science. And so some people's like, yo, we want to work with you on that. And then some is like, I'll just join one of your trainings or a three, four day training event to get the game and then figure it, put the pieces together themselves. But there's a science behind it. And so I, uh, I really feel, and I, I, I meant to share this with you, Jess, I really feel that we're moving into a season. Like when I look at what you was doing in, in EYL and so many people in our network and how we're moving the needle when it comes to financial literacy and investments and wealth building and entrepreneurship and really saying, man, this is, but now when we have that same energy when it comes to my story yeah. and say, hey, this is my story, this is my pain. You know what I'm saying? People are gonna gain from my pain. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be I'm going to I'm going to monetize the mess that I went through. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to make impact and income all at the same time. Yeah. And speak in one hour and make what I could have made in a whole month. Right. OK. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a different it's a different season yeah. we're in now when people can now take a stage and get compensated by changing lives. Gotcha. Sp surgeons. People like because I, I, I've been asking people like, what's the one profession that somebody makes a really, really a large amount of money, but it's also changing lives. And most people try to rival me, say, well, surgeons. I'm like, okay, all right. They did that surgery, but it was other surgeons. It was other nurses in there. That surgery was six hours. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And we don't know how much exactly the insurance company paid them, but you saved one life. Yeah. Somebody can take the stage Speak to 500 or 5,000. Tomorrow I'm going to be at GCU, Grand Canyon University, for the largest suicide prevention conference in the country. 8,000 young people I'll be speaking in front of. Mm. One hour, I'm reaching 8,000 people. You feel me? Incredible. So so it's like, so you can, to, to be able to minister and speak, because I feel like it's all ministry day, yeah. to be able to minister and speak and change that many lives but they get compensated so well, it almost feels unfair. Yeah. Yeah. This is like, man, I, we really blessed. But you know what? It is to... fair because we've been through so much. Come on, talk about it. Yes. And, mm. and, and there's so many jobs that took advantage of us, if we all mm. want to be honest, right? They really bad. were using us. And instead of getting frustrated and getting upset and going to this dark hole, I realized, man, I can actually get paid to talk about now I speak on yes, burnout prevention. Sure. If Look, I wasn't burnt I, out, I couldn't talk about I, it. I, 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 I need these nuts and bolts, okay? <laughs> I, I, I need to know how to do this, yeah, right? Okay. So I heard you say a logo. We need a logo. Mm -hmm. We need a speaker reel. So a three phase, four phases. The logo is the most important thing. Because okay. that way you can at least have a business card. Like David Chan's with a little <laughs> like D and an S. S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah some yeah. real okay. modern and simple. <laughs> But right. I tell people all the time, if you have to explain your logo, it's a bad logo. I'm, the worst logo I've ever seen from somebody that joined our community. My man had a microphone with fire coming from the bottom and wings. And I said, what is this? He was like, well, the fire is from the mic because I spit fire. And the wings is there because I take people Hello. to new heights. I was like, bro, that's the worst thing I've ever heard in my So you want to have a professional logo, then EPK. There are people we have mm -hmm. yeah. that's getting a couple thousand dollars without even having a website. Just an EPK that says, hey, this is what I talk about. This is what I EPK? discuss. Like, a, Yeah, electronic press kit. Okay. Like the little brochures, like a little yeah. one pager. Like, yeah. here you go. This is what I speak on. And what should be in there? Your bio, your logo, a picture of you, yeah. preferably two, a lifestyle photo, and then a picture of you speaking. Y'all really got a formula. Can yeah, for sure. <laughs> and, then, and then the services or the topics, right? Because services can be different. People like, where you speak? No, it could be a keynote presentation. It could be a motivational, inspirational speech. It could be a corporate trainer. Uh, it could be a leadership. You know what I'm saying? Like, it could be a workshop facilitator. You could be hosting an event. So do you put all of that in the... It EPK? depends. It depends. You might put services rendered, 
um, professional development, um, corporate trainer, keynote speaking, right? Gotcha. And then you put topics. And then you could put diversity, equity, inclusion, or or school company culture. You know, Got the, it. and then Got a short it. bio. Now they know what you're about. They have the visual of you speaking on stage. So they know you've been speaking. You're yeah. not new to this. You're true to this. Yeah. Then they see the services you offer and the topics. And the whole so the the website should match that. Absolutely. The yeah. next website's the next phase. Because okay. there are some people that say, Jeremy, I don't have the money to get a website right now. I'm like, well, get an EPK yeah. to at least okay. get I your see. foot in the door. I see. But then you really want to have the website. And, and then we have training, there? and we can't go into it now, but me and Jess got this whole thing on copy that converts. Yeah. You don't want to mm. just have copy that just, Dave's a nice speaker, and you should yeah. book him. There's a science behind it yeah. where it has to be written in third person yeah. to where you're selling yourself, and you're telling them the problem you solve with every paragraph without it sounding like you sell yourself. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. And so as they're reading it, they're literally reading it like some, like if you're reading my bio, if Jessica's reading my bio, she's literally reading it and you're you're receiving it like, man, this is what Dave says about Jeremy. Yeah. That third person thing hit different. But anyway, you want to have copy that converts high quality photos, testimonials mm-hmm. on a really strong website. That's when you can charge five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars. All right, so that same copy should be on the EPK and the website because there's a science to like the words. It's not just putting mm-hmm, it. It's mm-hmm. Dave is dynamic, right? Okay, okay. Goodness gracious. You and, go uh, well, real, let me ask you: Do y'all real? do y'all write that? Sometimes it depends I mean, on what clients. program you're in. Okay, I got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah for sure. We got a whole framework. We got a whole team. I'm yeah. just trying to see like what. Because I need all of this oh, yeah, stuff. Bro, yeah, bro, we'll, we'll talk offline. I'll, I'll just connect you directly with my folks. Yeah, they'll get you right. That thing's going <laughs> to flow, too. Yeah, you got so much yeah. juice, too. Yeah. Okay, all right. So what are the elements that need to be on the website? We well, need to have the, the correct copy um, and the booking, in, the inquiry questions. For sure. What are some of the questions you think are important? Yeah, so you want to have, like, the event because you want to know, like, what's happening. Because sometimes people will bring you in for a specific event. Sometimes they're like, I just want to work with you. Like, I've had a lot of people just create stuff for me. Like, hey, Jess, I want to work with you. Tell us what you want to do. So yeah. literally. Because <laughs> I have. Gonna base the event I, around yeah, I got, a, I got a program called You've Got This. So they created a You've Got This conference. And it was like all centered around me. I got to pick the date, the venue, like all of that type of stuff. So you want as much information as possible on there. You want them to describe some of their pains, some of their problems. But you don't want it so long where they look at it where they're like, I'm not feeling this all out. Mm -hmm. But enough that you know how much money they got, you know, a little bit about the organization, if it's nonprofit. So you can kind of properly have whether it's you calling your agents calling your booking manager and calling is all of that and you want to have testimonials you got to have social proof at the end of the day right so i always say like video i like video testimonials because i always feel like anybody could put like a headshot and a quote there but like you can't (laughs) create a video of somebody saying that you're phenomenal and then at the top we have like a must watch which that demo reel and that's why the demo reel, I think, is one of the most important <coughs> things. To be honest, like, speakers, we need to see you speaking, right? Yeah. And that's why sometimes when I go to people's social media and they say that they're a motivational speaker, yet they ain't got no speaking content and they got a whole right. bunch of flyers, the confusion is there, right? So I know that decision makers are stalking me. Every time I talk to them, I just, I watch this. And I don't have a lot of followers, yeah. but I have a lot of impact. So when I actually use my voice, it's affecting people to the point where they want to go to my website and learn more. And, and so she said she got a lot of impact but she's also got a lot of content i'm I'm gonna give them the backstory in case our viewers or listeners this is like yo they they booked a tour around her you've got this but what they don't know is she's got a whole bunch of videos online and and when she's pouring into the people and at the end she's like i know it's gonna be okay you've got this and that's how she ends every video. Mm. So she's spitting. She's motivating them. Come on, don't be doing that, girl. Like, you are amazing. Blah, 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 blah. At the end of the day, it's going to work out. Why? Because you've got this. Like, so she ends all her. So uh, now she done branded. Yeah, you yeah, got this. Yeah. When they like, girl, come to, come to uh, Cincinnati and yeah. we're going to do a you got this tour. You There's did a, a tour? science behind yeah. it. And, and and I made the organizi- organizations do it. I'm like, hey, I'm already going to be here. Come on. Man, you have such a beautiful city. It would be unfortunate me to come and just to speak to your organization. Who else could be come blessed on. by this message? <laughs> and then, oh and my god! Because then it doesn't feel salesy. Right. It's and just like who really else could her, impact? Yeah. And if they feel her heart, yeah, they're really on. Let's say on some selfish stuff, and you're like a bad person. It's like why wouldn't you want other people to be blessed by her presence? 
So some of them are not even, they don't even get a percentage. No. Nor do they get a discount. Yeah. They just really say, man, I believe in you. Bro, you've had that, bro. You've been to some schools and they say, you know what? You didn't have to ask for it. They say, you know what? I'm going to connect you with this person. You got to meet this person. A hundred percent. They for sure. have no check or nothing. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo, listen, this hour-long conversation is not going to pay me $18,000. I'm going to get a hundred with you. I'm like, I'm out of the wrong field. Golly. <laughs> You this actually, is wild. yeah, you were actually in the sweet spot. And then, if I can yeah. go a little deeper, just to give you, this is something for you. I would also tell you to look at businesses. And do you have a nonprofit? Yes. Okay, because I was about to say, if not, you can, you can, you can. I don't want to say funnel it through mine because it sounds illegal, but you could have worked with me. <laughs> but I just wouldn't take any yeah. of it. But you find these companies. IBM says, "Man, Dave, we love what you're doing for entrepreneurship. We want to sponsor a school tour." So we're going to pay $80,000 and we want you to hit eight schools in this local area. That's nothing for them because they got to have the text right up. They got to put something back. So that's a whole nother lane where you can go to black businesses or businesses as a whole. Let me tell you something. When, they, when that knee was on George Ford's neck, bro, I had so many people in the corporate space. Jeremy, how can I help? I see now. Bro, I was having some powerful conversations. They was like, what can we do? I'm like, well, if you really want to make an impact, you see how much these kids are struggling. So, yeah, they get some Title I funding, but bring some folks in to talk about entrepreneurship. Bring some folks in to talk about financial literacy. Bring me in to talk about social emotional learning, right, and mental health and wellness to, like, really help them see the greatness that's inside of them if you really want to make an impact. Man. And so now they say, okay, we got a budget for that. And then they feel good because they blessing yeah. the babies, which indeed they are. And, and I just thought Robin about Hood this, method. too. Low-hanging fruit for you. You already got sponsors on the podcast. Come on. Mm -hmm. Come on. So you hit the sponsors that are already paying you and say, hey, listen, I'm trying to do this for the community. Come on. All and then right. so let's go deeper. And so then what say you call it you call it a whatever tour. Whatever tour you put on the front and the, the different sponsors for that tour, you know what I'm saying? Say if it's um was Adolf, Adolf, that's got the um the in the healthcare space. Uh, I know someone with the little duck. No, he was a guy that was on your, um, anyway. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so. Uh, I thought you were talking about the, you, what are you talking about? He does, what does he do? He's got like some um, health care or wellness. Oh, AD Dolphin, yeah. Come on, bro. When I say I know what you're talking about. <laughs> you got yeah. me in sponsor mode. I don't know, bro. Like, AD Dolphin. So say yeah. his company, which is like, bro, they millions and millions. Like yeah. that is nothing for them to say, man, here's $200,000. It's gonna, well, it's gonna be a text runoff. <laughs> well, text but then, but watch this. <laughs> and it's like, okay, I'm gonna hit so many schools. But he might be like, yo, I'm from Milwaukee, so just do me a favor, hit schools in Milwaukee. Or he might be like, bro, I don't care. I know the impact that you're making. So that's wow. that Robin Hood model. These big companies and corporations that have to spend the money anyway. It's like, hey, spend it with me. I'm gonna make impact out here. And then now these kids got my brand on the front, but then the company name on the back. So when I hit organizations, I'm like, yo, we do a, a sponsor with Mercedes Benz. This is a proposal we put together. Yeah. Driven for success tour. But on the back, it got Mercedes Benz, Peace Tree. Mm. You feel me? Now you got 2,000 kids walking around with Mercedes Benz, Peace Tree. You see what I'm saying? Like, I there's like a, just a science to it, bro. Okay. All right. Mm. So, okay. We got to get our branding together. We got to get our logo. And again, y'all help with all of that, right? It's not like I got to, okay, cool. So we got we got so many different programs within our speakers of character. So people can pick what's right. So for different them. layers, for sure, for sure. Gotcha. Okay, we find the market, we get our message, EPK, uh, uh, video testimonials, website. Here's here's where I think a lot of us would struggle. How what do we what do we say to these people? Like when we call, or do we are we sending emails? Or we knocking on a corporation's <laughs> door or a school's door, how do we get them to know we exist? Hmm. So I'll say this here. You have to create demand, right? Because you can't make demands if you're not in demand. Mm. So the more content that you put out here, I tell people all the time, if I come and speak for David Shan's technical school, bro, I'm, I'm like, I'm speaking at one time, I'm getting a flyer made, I'm a post of the week before. Mm -hmm. I'm going to post that flyer the day before. I might post a flyer the day of as well. Then I'm going to take pictures from the event. And then on Thursday, I'm going to hashtag throwback Thursday when I spoke at David Shan's school. Then the following week, Friday, flashback Friday when I spoke at David Shan's school uh, and show some different pictures. That's four or five different touch points from one event. 
So I had an organization years ago call me like, Jeremy, bro, it seems like every day I look up on Instagram, you booming. Bro, I was averaging like three gigs a month. But because I did so much with the content, he felt like I was crazy in demand. And I'm sorry, real quick, three gigs a month, that's not a lot? (laughs) (laughs) I just want to know where to set my goals. Right. You know so, I mean? so, yeah. so I, I was about to say in my prime, but when I was charging like 15, 20, I was averaging three a week. Which for some people, <laughs> but I know some folk like Jared and them was speaking yeah. four times a week. I'm just like, bro, that's a like that's a lot. But after a while, three times a week, jump on the airplane. I don't think the human body is supposed to even be in a bird that high that often, <laughs> right? But that begins to weigh on you. Yeah. So my sweet spot now is like. 1.5 a week. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm happy with that. Really? So I fly tonight to Arizona. I speak. Fly right back. Um, What's the most you've ever gotten to speak? <sighs> um, fifty One time, $55,000. But I also got 115000 but I had to speak three times. Oh. But I do. <laughs> I'm not saying like that. I'm not, it would have been cat if I'd have said yeah, 115,000, yeah. yeah. and my wife would have called me out like, "Bro, but you spoke three times." Though. Right. But yeah, so 115,000 spoke three times, but one time 55. But the biggest one I'm interested, I'm looking forward to, is the 14, 18. I mean, Fortune 18 company, Ford Motor Company. You're working on that now. I speak for them. Next year. Oh, you already got it. You already locked it up. Yeah, 50K. 45 minutes. <sighs> yeah. What did you and, say to and them? They're gonna str- and they're going to stream this to all of It'll be a couple thousand people there, but they're going to stream it to every employee across the country. Wow. So I feel like, even though I broke through, yeah. it's levels to it. I feel like that's going to be an even bigger breakthrough. Yeah. So how did you get them to pay to book you? Um, I just got a lot of content and social media and a lot of YouTube videos and just, and we, we even teach on that, like the science, like how long your video should be like, what the video should have. And then they find it. And then they're like, man, if you connected with me through YouTube, I can only imagine how you are in person. But then they went to my website and they saw my website. Then they saw my speaker reel and they saw me at MGM Grand. Though they were like, oh, he had the same dressing room as Madonna and Beyonce. And Elton John, like, oh, he got the lights, 18,000 people. Like, so they not questioning if I'm that guy, humbly. But they like, so when Ab was like, yep, okay, he can do that. It'll be 50,000. They was like, okay, well, all right, we'll meet with our team. Came back the next week and was like, it's been approved. We just, we just do, do want to have one combo with Jeremy just to make sure he's the perfect fit. Yeah. Murdered it. I bet. Murdered it. Tell me about that room. Tell me about that conversation. So we on virtually, and it's like five, four people on. I'm the fifth one. And they're just like, okay, this is about the event. Um, tell us about yourself. I told them about me. I asked a few questions. You know, you got to get that data. Yeah. And I said, this is this is what I will probably share to your audience. Knowing from what I know, knowing your agenda, the theme, the purpose for the event, yeah. your pain points, what you're struggling with, how you want them to feel, this is what I will share. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We love it. We love it. Oh, my God. Eb, you're amazing. I was like, praise wow. God. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I was talking to Inky one time, and he was telling me. Inky's going crazy yeah. <laughs> people think i'm killing i'm like bro ain't here on the level like stop playing yeah <laughs> yeah i've had a it's bunch of conversations too, that's bro. why i'm yeah. like i'm gonna call him and like just <laughs> tell him about himself because he'll give me like bits and gems while i'm around him but there's a different there's a there, there's there's more to it i'm seeing so um he was saying like he'll have those meetings or whatever and he said, he'll tell them exactly what you just said. Tell them what you're going to speak on, but don't give them the presentation because then they get to decide whether they want it or not. So I remember I had one of these meetings and I'm going full tilt. Oh, yeah, I'm going to hit them with this. And this is some philosophy. And it's like, ah, eh. Mm. And I didn't get the gig. I didn't get the gig. But it's just so much you don't know about it. Right. How are you getting speaking gigs? I was about to say, sometimes you got to leave something to the imagination. Yeah. You want to tease good. it up. Yeah. So that they're interested and they're intrigued. So I like to go to conferences. I like to actually go where decision makers are. So there are conferences. So if I'm speaking in the education space, educational conferences, I want to speak to realtors. I'm at realtors conferences. If I want to speak, you know, whatever the industry is, I'm going to conferences because Mm. people show up there wanting to learn knowledge. Sometimes, if, depending on what their job is, they're required to come to these conferences. Now I'm keynote in these conferences, but early on it was like, let me get in the room with the decision makers. And that's honestly how I ended up writing that book. 
Like I was literally at a conference and the lady next to me was like, hey, like, what do you do? Like, clearly you're not an educator. That's what she said to me. And I was like, oh, no, I'm, I'm actually a speaker. She, I, we actually need a speaker next month. I was like, I just God. need a speaker. Yeah. She said they were looking for a black woman speaker specifically, but they had to have a book. So I said, yeah, I got a book. Wake up and win. Your wow. student guide is success. I had no book. I had, <laughs> I had confidence. Mm, so, I, I so I wrote a book in a month mm. and sold, I think, 500 to them. Do you, can I see your EPK? Uh, I, do you have your phone? I, I just want to see it. Can I see my, yours? I just want to see y'all. I just want to see what it looked like and y'all team design what I'm about to see, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, for okay, sure. Okay, all right. So, so I'm, I'm going to share and, this with you here. And so just so you know, like, you don't have to have all of this. Um, His EPK is real in depth. <laughs> I was saying you don't have to have all of that. It's fine. It's just so clean. Yeah, it's so clean. Your team would do mine, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'm just listen. I'm just making sure yeah. that you're not gatekeeping information. No, you know yeah. what I mean? like I want to I use who you use. Right, right, but right. yes, okay. But 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 one thing about us, yeah, it's know, not super in depth. It's just, I mean, bro, it's highlights. It's about pictures, Jeremy. It's quotes. Yeah, some topics. pictures of him with some people. Mm-hmm. You mm -hmm. on stage? Mm -hmm. The topics? Mm -hmm. Yeah, same. In the mm -hmm. last, and then the results. The, yep, <laughs> the result. Yeah, and then the book and info should be like the last thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, more information. Just, I'm a philanthropist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but that's <laughs> key. good. Can I speak about that? Talk to me. So I literally was just meeting with um, a company last week. Yeah. And they were intrigued about the work that I'm doing in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, when I turned 40, we had the 40 for 40 campaigns. Mm -hmm. You supported that. Yep. So we put 40 kids through college, through our foundation. Last year, we put another 20 kids through. Oh, wow. So now we've got 60 kids that we put in college in South Africa. And our nonprofit feeds 1,000 kids every single week. So now mm. companies feel better about paying me forty, forty-five, fifty thousand dollars because they know I'm not just pocketing this money and gonna just buy a new truck. Yeah. I'm putting good out here in the world. I like so it. I was intentional about putting that in my EPK so that when Ebony tells them, okay, for this that'll be forty four thousand dollars or fifty thousand dollars, they don't say, you know what I'm saying? Cause yeah. bro, don't get it twisted, like it'd be hate. Oh yeah. Some of the people that's booking us might be doing like sixty, eighty thousand dollars a year, and then they realize you're about to make thirty five. Ah, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, 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 I'm letting them know like, hey, it's bigger than me, and so now we're a partner in this work that I'm doing out here in the world. I see. Yeah. Have yeah. you ever like come across that where somebody's like, you feel they actually say something to you? Well, no, because I don't even have those conversations no more. Oh, uh, yeah, so Ab gotcha. handles all that. I want to just I want to keep my heart pure. I'm like I really don't even want to know how much the gig is. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to know if they they gave you you gave them a discount and it's only thirty. Then I feel away like you don't see my value. So I'm like I don't even want to know about that. Let me just show up and speak and bless the people. So you, you know just trust Ab. She works the deal. She know what you will and won't. Yeah. Take and, and then just, if and there's ever a concession, she'll get with Tracy or she might hit me like, "Would you be willing to or whatever?" Yeah. You're already gonna be there. That type of thing. Got it. And. Um, you alluded to something too earlier where you don't want to be traveling and speaking and stuff and you give people gigs. I'm trying to see how I could get down with that right there. <laughs> right. Like, I want to be a part of that with what right, you got going right, on. Right, right, So I would probably say I take just under 5% of the requests that I have coming in. 5%? Yes, right. So like I talked to Ed last week and Ed was like, man, bro, today we got like five inquiries. Now I don't get five inquiries every day, mm -hmm. but I might average maybe, you know, 15, you know what I'm saying, a, a week or sometimes 20 a week mm -hmm. requests. And so if you look at like I'm only going to travel maybe once or twice, you know what I'm saying, that's like less than 5% of the yeah. requests that come in. And then you have really, really busy seasons where I'll get eight requests in a day. Then you got some times where I might just get two a day. But I only take a very small percentage of them because I want to be present with my family. You know what I'm saying? And, and now I'm able to charge a higher amount. It's like supply and demand, bro. Yeah. It's like the more people want me, the more the price goes up. That's why ET charges two hundred thousand dollars every time to speak. Is he charging two hundred thousand? Two hundred thousand dollars, bro. When I, I talk to ET, but you know what? You know what fuels E? It's not the money, bro. He's like, bro, I don't need much. Like me and DD can get by. You know what I'm saying? A couple hundred thousand dollars a year. Like he, you know, E ain't living no yeah. crazy elaborate lifestyle. But when I see him sending kids to Costa Rica for two weeks, 
I see him sending kids in the inner city to Dubai that, that got good grades. Yeah. I'm seeing him take 20 kids to the Super Bowl and giving them front row experience and putting them on tour buses. This is why I tell people, bro, we kingdom speakers, bro. Yeah. Me and Jessica, kingdom speakers, bro. We're trying to build up the kingdom. We're trying to bless people. This is God's work. So I'll take the Robin Hood model. I'm going to speak. I'm going to change lives. I'm going to impact you. When I got that microphone, Holy Ghost going to speak through me. I'm going to enhance your life. I don't know who was on the verge of quitting, who was going on the verge of committing suicide, who was about to leave their wife, who was going to leave that company, who was mentally exhausted and checked out. I don't know. I just know mm. I'm doing the best I can do to put good out here. And I'm, I'm like, man, God is pleased. But then I take the resources from that. Do you know there were years, bro, when I first met you, I was paying 30% tithe and offering. Mm. To the church, bro. Every Sabbath, I'm 30%. People was like, bro, 30%. God told me 30. And I was like, man, God, when he first told me that, I ain't that holy. <laughs> first time I was like, I got to do 30. He said, son, you get to. But all the kick doors you pull, all the trapping, all the hustling, you got to, you get to. You should be dead. You should be in prison. I have saved you. I have redeemed you. Mm. I'm like, you're right. And it's all your money anyway. You own everything. You may go. We still searching for the riches you got on the earth. Mm. So, so I, people say, you know, um, it, uh, money is the root of all evil. No, it's the love of money. Yeah. You can't serve God and mammon. Like you got to make a decision there. So I'm in the place yeah. now. I'm like, man, we building up the kingdom. We blessing people. We ministering. We pouring into them, bro. At our conference, bro, over hundred people got baptized. I say by accident. Like, how does this happen? Folks are hungry bro. for more. And I, I oh, I go on and on. I Take hate, it away. And I, I just, I, I hate. Even after what you said, I hate to like think though, what you do with the other 95% though? <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, my bad. You know I, 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 I'm with you. I'm with yeah, you on that bad. And I felt bad even thinking what you were just telling me. I was still wondering, like, what do you do with the rest of them choice though? Yeah. So, so Ebony has a list of people that speak in that space. So, if I feel it's so a, bad. If it's a, no, no, it's a good question. Though. If it's an educational request that comes in, she's got a list of people that she'll share this to. And then we'd say, hey, this is Jeremy's unavailable, but this is someone Jeremy works with, or this is someone Jeremy mentored, or this is someone Jeremy's partner with, and we will recommend this person. Okay, how So we, if how ever we get a gig get for 15 or 10 grand, huh? How we get on the list, though? Well, I, as soon as I see that, we do your website. Okay. And it's really strong in that educational entrepreneurship motivational yep. space. Because if I see on the website now, and they see social proof, they see entrepreneurship, they like, I'm not really sure. But all the pictures, all the content with you in schools will help you put together a strong website where they look at it like, yo, Dave's been going crazy in the schools. Yeah. He's in crazy demand. And he's been on tour with Jeremy and E.T. It's a no-brainer. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So, we got so you. I have to come to your program to be on the list? Well, our, you know how we do. Our relationship is Bro, different. I'll come through the... No, I, I need the information anyway. So, like, I'm... Right, right, right. I'll, I'm I'll, saying... I'm, what I'm saying is you don't have to join our Speakers Elite program for me to do that for you. But the average person, yes, you would need to be in there. I would have to certify, like, yep, you got the real deal, and then I recommend you from there. And sometimes they take my recommendations, sometimes they don't. I'm out of it. I just know Ebony has a list of people, and if they on the list, she might say, hey, for this event, this is a, a couple people we recommend. Because mm. I'm like, somebody from the camp going to get it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't go and get Joe Blow that don't really yeah. care or don't really got no smoke. Like, it's a whole bunch of folks that rock with, with us. You know what I'm saying? I've given wow. opportunities for Inky to speak. Inky is given opportunities for me to speak. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like that. Jeez. And yeah. those numbers ain't no little numbers. Yeah, we blessed, man. And you, I, I had another question, but... You you're not. You said you were you were doing more corporate than schools. Now I crossed over. I still do schools. Um, I still do schools. I have definitely have a heart for it. But I'm gonna tell you the shift came. It's it, Crump did it. Uh, about a year and a half ago, I was doing an interview somewhere, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm one of the top, you know, what I'm saying youth speakers in the world." I might have said the top, and Crump was like, "Bro, don't ever say that again." He's like, bro, you own several multi-million dollar companies. You're an amazing husband and father. You got 20 plus employees. You're the best leader I've ever known. Oh, bro, I feel emotional. I feel like, really? <laughs> He's like, bro, and all you've gone through, all you've endured with your marriage, you still operating at a high level with your integrity, but you ain't lose your mind and you still kept the companies. You still operating at a high level. Your body fit. You ain't drinking, you ain't smoking. Like, He's like, bro, you, you like, you're not normal. You are so much bigger than that. And he was like the corporate space, the professionals, these C-suite executives, like they got all these team members, like they can learn from your leadership. You know what mm. they say, brother, picture can't appreciate itself because it's in the frame. So I was mm. still in, well, I've been dominating the educational space for 10 years and God was like, 
you're ready for the big leagues now. Not that the school space is not the big leagues, right? Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, like, for that space, I still do that, but I crossed over. If you go to my website now, jeremyanderson.org, it's all corporate. Oh, wow. I still get 15, 20 requests in the educational space per week. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Because they still want me, but I've switched everything over to the corporate space. Okay. I'm gonna because be I got more I got more value to add to the marketplace. I'm going to be the new Jeremy Anderson. <sighs> I'm going to take, take your slot. <laughs> there we go. Jess, how are you getting speaking gigs? Like, what is the process of you getting a gig? So some of it's just people are just coming to my website. Others is referrals. So, like, if I'm at a speaking engagement. So it's not like you're making calls all day. No. <laughs> no. Uh, Does that work, though? I no. I, got a, I mean, I have an assistant who does, like, uh, like marketing campaigns and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But really, she's following up with referrals. But I, my, my main objective is to do a phenomenal job when I'm speaking. Come on. And for that event organizer to say, listen, these people are actually here in the audience. And they have another conference coming up. And you should be their keynote speaker. So... That's the the basis for me is how do I maximize this one opportunity and do such a great job and these people are already excited and then I have my team follow up with them. God, let me tell you how this just became a full circle moment and how I need to humble myself and I need to learn how to speak. Okay. So I think I told you a story before. I'm in the back of the room with Inky before he speaks and I'm just trying to steal as much information as I can. And Enki, I was like, yo, man, how you get... No, he said something like, um, he said, after every gig I speak at, I get gigs from that gig, after every single one of them. And I said, well, how you do that? He said, yo, I go on stage and I do what I do. He said, I crush it on stage. Mm. And he said something that I felt like he was coming at me a little bit. I felt the way. He said, well, I was like, how do I get more gigs? He's like, do you kill it on stage when you... Get on stage? I'm like, yeah, I'll be cooking. And he said, are you getting gigs from that gig? I was like, no. You know what I mean? He didn't even say so anything did he, after uh, that. Okay, so he, oh, so he's a good friend. Yeah. Because he, he could have been like, so are you really killing it? No, I would rather he say that. It was just this funny little look he gave. He said, <laughs> oh, that's my dog. yo, that's worse. I would rather it say, well, you need to improve. Like, come on, man, put your head on my back. Get him in a little bit of something. Like, pull your arm around me. Right. He was like, so I need to humble myself. Mm. I need to learn the art of speaking. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm realizing through this conversation is two parts. You have to really, you have to be good, not just, not, not just enough to satisfy your own self so you can pull a clip for Instagram. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You got to be really good at speaking. And then there's a whole bunch of um, stuff that needs to wrap around your speaking that makes it all make sense. It's three parts. Talk to me. You gotta be you gotta be a really good speaker, like you said, just helps with that. You gotta have the marketing and the stuff like that to get paid top dollar. Yeah. But the third piece is you gotta be a good person. Mm. When I uh, Inky is in favor mode, bro. He speak one time <laughs> Next level. and there's three to five opportunities that come from that. Yeah. The reason why Jessica works with our organization is she came to one of our conferences three years ago and at the end of the conference, as opposed to everybody else just leaving, she stayed behind and was just ministering to different women, pouring into them, letting them know they got a message, they got a voice. Nobody realized what she was doing. My, but Crump be watching, bro. Crump, yeah. you know, he don't trust people. So you're like, what's she going? He was like, <laughs> he talked to old girl, what's she, what's she say to you? She just poured into me and loved on me and prayed for me and kept it moving. So when we saw the person she was, there's a bunch of dope speakers out here. Now it's impressive that she beat out 15,000 people, yeah. you know, and became the face of a news network. But her heart for people, her heart for God was just like, oh no, I, I need to keep her close like she adds that type of value so it's wow. be a good speaker have the marketing and stuff but then also being a good person and yeah. so a lot of times i teach about being right so often we focus on okay what do i got to do well we're not human doers we're human beings mm-hmm. so who do you got to be in your core now there are some amazing beautiful people who are you're a great person you got a great story but you're missing that middle part mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying or you got some good marketing and branding and you're a good person but your keynote sucks right but once you have all three yeah. sheesh game changer bro yeah all right so let's let's figure out the missing piece uh we have um and i don't know when you're watching this but um there's you can get some help. You can offer some help, yes. right? So what is, uh, how, how do people connect with you on that? So the one thing I'm most excited about is we're about to do a three-day training. 
Mm-hmm. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. I'm gonna give you the exact. I'm gonna give you the exact dates. Um, because well, someone might be watching this after the date. They just need to click the link right now because it's coming up at some point. You, yes. you, you, you're all, you're always you you do you continue to do it right. right? Correct. Okay. Good, right. Good, good, Correct. Good. And so you know during that three day training, me, Jessica, Et, we 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 break it down like from start to finish mm. what you gotta have. So it's like after you spend all those hours with us, like this, we're giving away the stuff on the podcast, but we're that much more methodical, like step by step. This is just a conversation, yeah. but now it's teaching. And people leave each day with five, six pages of notes and they know exactly what to do. And after those three days, they like know exactly what they have to do to go out here and make impact. You got 400 students that are, that are like paid speakers. Yeah. Now we got close to 2,000 total in our community. Mm. But yeah, pr- probably the majority of them are paid yeah. speakers. Mm-hmm. Let me be clear. I'm talking about 400 that's like getting to it. Oh, like six, seven figures. Right. Yeah, Bro, let me yeah. tell you something. Well, I only, I only have one. Seven figure speaker, Chris Singleton. He did 1.1 last year. Super proud of him. He's not even 30. Phenomenal story. Right? And so I just want people to know it's it's real. But I want to talk about Kevon Lee. Where's Kevon Lee? I feel like he's in the West Coast. Cali. He's in the West Coast, California. 26 years old. Made a hundred thousand dollars in three months speaking for schools. Wow. I can show you this testimony video right now. It blows my mind. My man said I was making $26,000 living in California after taxes. You know they ain't all the money. This program works, blah, blah. Bro, I sleep good at night, bro. Hey, why we ain't got no gigs? Like, what's up? What are we doing? <laughs> what, what in the hey, world? Hey, hey, ready to keep run the out here yeah. bro, making a hundred in three months. Yeah. I, don't, I haven't made anything in the last three months from speaking. Well, no, I haven't. No. Bro, you make money speaking on your podcast yeah. every day. It's, it ain't that. But we're going to talk about it on the It ain't stage. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see you doing a quarter easily. I don't make 100000 from three podcast episodes, okay? I see, okay, right. <laughs> I, see you, I see you. I really see you doing a quarter. My homeboy, Fendi, he's really, he grew up with Toby in Houston. Um, Toby's on track. I told him he was going to do six figures, but now he's already hit 60K in the last four months. So he was like, whoa. It's, I'm like, bro, you could do a quarter this year. Your first full year of speaking, you could do a quarter. His mm. wife is now supportive, and she quit her job. Right. Wow. Because she's like, oh, these checks is coming in. My really? man messed around. I got like $15,000 check last week, speaking for a middle school. One time, wife what? was like, okay, I believe now. <laughs> and I had a Zoom meet with him and his wife, because that's my people. I'm like, me and my wife prayed with him, poured into him, because me and my wife, Tracy, we quit our jobs. So we ministered to him, pouring to him. Y'all got this. You can do this. And so she was kind of like, okay, let's see. My man started getting them opportunities coming in. She quit her job, bro. Say less. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, give people the website so they can, uh, it's, uh, what is it? Social so Proof Speaks? Social Proof. Let me pull it up right here. Yeah, Social Proof. Because um, your people will get a special. Yes, special discount. Listen. Yes. If you are interested in becoming a speaker, I don't care if it's full time. Some of you are looking like, yo, this this is my call, this is my gift. I'm gonna be a full time. But if it's part time, if you wanna be a better communicator, if you wanna like really understand this gig, yeah. yo, it yeah. seems like one gig, bro, one gig a year can really supplement income on a major level. There are so some listen, people that just say, I wanna just get one gig a month. And they make one gig a month, which is equal or more than they got paid that whole month. Bro, when I was working at Cheesecake Factory, <laughs> I would make about three thousand dollars a month, and I had to work a hundred and sixty hours. One gig, um, Could, yeah. All right, man. All right, yo. I I really want to get off this couch because I like there's mad stuff I want to do, and I need to figure out the process on how to like really get this ball yep, rolling. Yep. So okay, what the website socialproofspeaks.com speaks dot com. Yep. Socialproofspeaks.com. Speaks.com. Listen to me. If they want the the special for our training, you got a special rate. Oh. Yeah, that's so that's special. Yeah, if they go to the regular site, they will pay double. (laughs) (laughs) Let me be clear. It's it's the whole hookup for real. Speaks.com. Listen to me, y'all. And I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a hundred percent and I've known Jeremy. For a long time, mm-hmm. and I watched him operate in excellence in this space, 
And I've also seen people go through his program and get speaking gigs. And that was some of the stuff that like the hate in my heart, like the jealousy a little bit. I, you gotta it fight, was, you gotta yeah, real sure. hate though. <laughs> A little jealous. I mean, nah, if I'm a, okay, a little this, this is a safe yeah, space, yeah. right? How come I'm not getting it? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm like, yo, I feel like I'm a dope speaker. And I feel like I should be getting speaking gigs. Right. And I'm seeing people who, in my mind, I don't think are as talented as me. And they're winning. Bro, anybody would feel away. I'm just being, this is a safe space, right? I can yes. be myself? Okay. But I realized that it, it ain't about talent. It's having a formula. Mm -hmm. And I need to be a part of that formula and stop blaming it on, like stop, stop being so arrogant thinking that I'm this dope person. Mm -hmm. And this is so interesting because a lot of the things that you need to do in this digital age is gonna be based on your ability to market or your ability to sell a product. But uh, I'm, just, I'm just super excited that an average person, and I've watched it. Right. I've watched people with a fraction of the followers that I have come into the game and start killing it on stage. And I'm like, yo, I mean, I'm, I have a good life. Oh, I'm good, sure. I, do, I do my thing. But that's something that I wanna do in speaking and it's people that are coming through your program and they come out on the other side just killing me. So <laughs> yeah, this is good. Yeah, um, yeah so socialproofspeaks.com, man. Socialproofspeaks.com. Again, I've seen Jeremy do this. I've witnessed it. And I've also witnessed his students uh, come in and come out on the other side. And I actually should have joined your program a couple of years ago, if I'm being honest with you. But you know how sometimes it's hard to like do business with your friends. But this really isn't even this is that this is almost equivalent. So I even question if you really, really, really wanted it, because you could pull up at any time. Like you hit Ebony, my assistant, and yeah. she gives you game. You could pull up at any time. That's what I'm saying. And, and that's what I need to do for you. So we could swap it out. Cause my podcast is eh, and needs to go to a whole nother level. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I need to have my team get with you. You know what I'm saying? To see, okay, what can we? How can we take our podcast another right. level? And then we also support you and help you take your speech. I'm actually level. wondering if you really, really want this. Because <laughs> you can pull out. Ah, facts. <laughs> That's real. That's good. Nah, man, I appreciate it, Jess. This is. It was a pleasure having you here. Yeah. Okay. And um, at, if I'm being a hundred percent honest, okay, yeah. this is all my idea. I, I don't know feeling. what Jeremy told you. Yeah. Okay. But he was telling me he was going to come speak. And then he started talking about you. And I'm like, we need a woman to come. I want to, I want to, like, I need, I need to know from her perspective yeah. because you are a speaker and you've been in the space for a little bit, but I need, I need somebody else that does it a different way. Yeah. So this, this was my idea. Thank you for okay, having me. So I need your help. <laughs> I got you. I say that to say I need your help. No, I knew. Right. I knew it was coming okay. around. I knew it was coming around. Let let people know how they can reach out to you, man. Yeah, my website jessicalundy.com and at Jessica Lundy TV on social. I love it. I love it. And those that click that link, they'll be on the training with yeah. us. Me and Jess teaching. Oh, uh, we'll so you'll there. be on there and yeah. ET gonna be on there too. Yeah, yeah. and you. Surprise. And me. Surprise. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what you want me to teach on? What you want me to teach on? Uh, branding. Social media stuff. All right. I need you to help me write my speech, though, because I don't want freestyle no more. <laughs> what a style of speech. It's going to be, teaching. yeah. We got okay. you, though. We got you. All right. Just but tell there, me what to do, man. A, but there's a gap that we have that you can fill, and we've already, me and my team are already yeah. met and strategized. So. See, and I, I know all this stuff, and when I do, like, teach on it. Because I teach every morning, so it's not a it's not a hard thing for me. And maybe that's my issue. Because I teach every morning, I have to come up with new stuff for these group of people every day. That's preventing me from, I got it. I got it. Yeah. Okay. Listen, man. Socialproofspeaks.com. Join the program. Now is the time. You get to get paid off of your experiences. You get paid off of your pain and that gift and that idea that you've had forever. Now it's time to use it. So, Jeremy, please take us out with a word of wisdom, my brother. Yeah, man. So uh, you deserve it. Um, You deserve it. What camera should I look at? Look this at. One, right there. Yep. That one, yeah. You deserve it. Um, All you've gone through, all the pain, all the hardships, all the suffering, all the times you're bumping your head trying to figure it out. Like you deserve not just to live the life of your dreams, mm -hmm. right? But you deserve to get compensated for it. And yeah. the second thing I'll say, is people need your story. Yeah. Like there's somebody out there that's on the verge of quitting, giving up, that feel discouraged, that's dealing exactly with what you were dealing with years ago or six months ago. 
and you have the tools and the tips to help change their life, how dare you? How dare you keep it to yourself? So for the folks that's like, I don't care about the money, ain't nobody tripping on money either. I give way more away than I keep. The point is I'm changing lives, and there's something inside you that the world needs, and I believe your life's going to go to a whole other level, and I can't think of another way to change this many lives and make this type of revenue than through the gift of speaking. So who would have known that all your pain will end up being your gain? And all you've gone through is not going to just enhance the lives of other people, but it's going to also enhance and change your life too. It's done that for me. It's done that for Jess. It's going to be doing that for Shans real soon. And you next. Man, listen, we can't close it out no better than that, man. Do yourself a favor. Go to socialproofspeaks.com. Socialproofspeaks.com. This is the year, y'all. And also, go get you some social proof, man. Go build something. Build it really, really big. Get the knowledge of it. But come back to your community and teach other people how to do it. That's how our community grows. Mm. We out there. Peace. If you like the video that you just watched, click this one. You're going to like this one, maybe even more. Click it right now.